On most days, Anthony Gumbali can be seen walking down Court Street, located in the neighborhood near his home in Brooklyn, New York. You get to know everybody on Court Street. People would wave to me. I didn't see you yesterday. Where were you? <laughs> Alex Gilchrist, also a New Yorker, enjoys going to the theater and rewarding himself for sticking to his lifestyle modification plan. Hi, how are you? Fine. How are you doing? Take your blood pressure. And I might treat myself to dinner tonight. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna probably have me some dessert. I might have a little sorbet. You better let me know. <laughs> Anthony Gumbali, Tony to his friends, and Alex Gilchrist have a lot in common. Both men are retired, have a zest for life, and they are both among the millions of people in the United States who have heart failure. It's a condition with a dire sounding name and a history that sounds frightening. 25 years ago when a patient was diagnosed with heart failure, there was very little that we could do. And generally it was a death sentence that you wouldn't live very long. And short of a heart transplantation, there was nothing to look forward to. Heart failure was named heart failure because the heart wasn't able to keep up with the demands of the body. Hey, how are you? Heart failure is a condition that can okay. be misunderstood, or when used as a broad term, it can describe several conditions where heart damage has occurred. The American Heart Association states that currently millions of people in the U.S. are living with heart failure, and hundreds of thousands of new cases are diagnosed each year. How's, you know? Since I saw you last, how you been feeling? Heart failure is one of the most common reasons people over the age 65 are admitted to the hospital. Left unchecked, heart failure can affect every organ in the body. But thanks to treatment advances, heart failure is no longer the death sentence it was a generation ago. Nowadays, we have lots of things we can do to repair the heart, to improve the heart. We see many patients with sick hearts, with diseased hearts that need medication. Sometimes they need surgery. Sometimes they need pacemakers. Great. Okay. But for most people, we can help them. And we can move them from being very tired and very symptomatic to living close to normal lives. To understand heart failure, it's important to know how the normal heart functions. Well, the heart is a pump and it is uh, made out of a muscle uh, and it is designed to pump blood to the body as well as to the lungs. So it's divided into two parts. The left side of the heart pumps blood out to the body and the right side of the heart pumps blood into the lungs. That's where it picks up oxygen and then moves back to the left side of the heart where the oxygen-rich blood is pumped back out into the body. Heart failure develops when the heart can't pump blood the way it's supposed to. In some cases, the heart can't fill with enough blood. In other cases, the heart can't send blood to the rest of the body with enough force. As the pumping action of the heart grows weaker, it can affect either the right side or the left side of the heart, or both sides. Right side heart failure occurs when the heart can't pump blood to the lungs where it picks up oxygen. Left side heart failure occurs when the heart can't pump enough oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. Once the heart gets weak, the, the heart may go into, and the body may go into heart failure. And then the heart is, is not able to meet the needs of the body. When that occurs, over, after a period of time, symptoms will develop and patients will be limited. As heart disease research has advanced, researchers discovered the different types of heart failure. There are two forms of heart failure, though. One form is a weak heart muscle that's caused by any number of things that can injure the heart muscle. The second form is less commonly known, but is actually a frequent diagnosis in patients requiring hospitalization. And that is a heart muscle that's stiff or thickened. Uh, so people that have high blood pressure for a long time oftentimes can develop a syndrome of heart failure when in actuality the heart muscle is not weak at all, it just isn't able to relax. 
Heart failure can have several specific causes. These include coronary artery disease, where blockages in the arteries restrict the blood supply to the heart muscle and cause it to perform poorly. Or coronary artery disease that is so severe, it results in a heart attack and destroys part of the heart muscle. High blood pressure that makes the heart have to work harder to pump out blood birth defects that result in heart valve irregularities or other abnormal changes to the normal cardiac anatomy, and bacterial and viral infections that can damage the heart valves or heart muscle itself. Occasionally, heart failure can result as a side effect of specific medications, but the most common cause of heart failure is a heart attack. These are caused by blockages in the arteries supplying blood to the heart muscle, Eventually, the blood supply is eliminated and a small section of the heart muscle will die and scar tissue will form. That portion of heart muscle can't squeeze normally and so that weakens the overall heart muscle. When the heart muscle doesn't work properly, congestion in the body's tissues can cause fluid buildup and other problems. The most common symptoms of heart failure are fatigue, edema or swelling in the feet and legs, fluid buildup in the lungs, and shortness of breath, especially when lying down. Unfortunately, because the fatigue and shortness of breath can be symptoms of other diseases, some patients with heart failure may be misdiagnosed and go untreated. People have been treated for asthma or bronchitis or emphysema uh, when in reality the problem is heart failure. Meanwhile, their heart failure remains untreated and their heart continues to weaken. Coming up, we'll see how doctors diagnose heart failure and hear more from both Alex and Tony. <laughs>